as part of this course, we're going to start with um, a math review. And many of these things are things that you have seen probably many times in your life. However, they do come up in chemistry. Sometimes not directly. You won't see, for example, um, the direct influence of simplifying fractions in chemistry because often you can, times you can use a calculator to do that. However, we do so, do something called dimensional analysis, which does involve using conversion factors, which are essentially fractions. So understanding the rules of fractions will help you to understand um, dimensional analysis. And many of you will probably um, move through this uh, fairly quickly and easily and answer some questions on Alex uh, that will help you to do these things. However, if you need a little bit of review, uh, a, a small amount of effort on the front end can help you out tremendously um, as we do more complex things in chemistry. Uh, just to put it into a little bit of perspective, if you're if one were focusing too much on the math, it would be very hard to learn the conceptual parts of the chemistry, which will help you to have an understanding and ultimately help you to be able to solve the problems better. Um, so what we want to do is kind of split that out a little bit, review the math first so that everybody has a solid foundation and remembers what's going on, and then basically move on in, in order to kind of build up some chemical prin principles on top of the math. So again, you won't be directly simplifying fractions very often in chemistry because you can use a calculator to actually do the math, but the rules are very useful. So let's, with that, go through these. And I'm going to go through this relatively quickly. So the first thing that we have here is simplifying fractions. So we have 2 over 4, and we want it in its simplest form. Well, we need to find the common denominator. And in this case, the common denominator is 2. And I'm just going to label that as CD. Common denominator is 2. So if we take the 2 and divide by 2, that's 1. And we take the 4 and divide by 2, that's 2. So if we divide both the top and the bottom by 2, we get 1 half, which is a simpler fraction than 2 over 4. Let's look at the next example. We have 12 over 16. In this case, we could divide both of these by 4. So the common denominator, the CD, is 4. So I want to take the top and divide by 4, and that's 3. Take the bottom and divide by 4, and that's 4. So I'm dividing both the top and the bottom by 4, and I'm finding that 12 sixteenths is simplified to 3 quarters. Now let's look at another example. We have 27 over 45. In this case, the common denominator is 9. Both are evenly divisible by 9. 27 divided by 9 is 3. 45 divided by 9 is 5. So 27 over 45 can be simplified to 3 fifths. So when simplifying fractions, you're looking for the common denominator, or the lowest common denominator, as it's sometimes called. So in this case, we have found the common denominator, and we have um, simplified out. Let's look at another example. What if we want to add and subtract fractions? In chemistry, we generally multiply and divide fractions, but these rules are still important. If we have 1 ninth and 4 thirds, we can't add these directly because they don't have the same denominator. As a rule, this is the numerator and this is the denominator. So the top is the numerator, the bottom is the denominator. So they have to have the same denominator in order for me to add them together. So we need a common one. In this case, we need the lowest common denominator here, um, which is 9 in this case, because 3 goes directly into 9. So the lowest common denominator in this case is 9. So it's a little bit different than up here. Here we're dividing, here we're multiplying. Well, we have to multiply this to make it 9. But remember, in order to not change this, we can only multiply by 1. So we want to multiply this by 3, but we can only multiply this whole thing by 1. So what we want to do is times 3 over 3. So we can now multiply both the top and the bottom by 3. And when we do that, 4 times 3 is 12. 3 times 3 is 9. So 4 thirds is equivalent to 12 ninths. Note that it's exactly the opposite of what we did for simplifying fractions. Here we divided by a common denominator. Here we found the lowest common denominator, and we multiplied out. 
So now what we have is 1 over 9 plus 12 over 9. When you're adding fractions, oops, let me move that. We have 1 over 9 plus 12 over 9. When you're adding fractions, you add the top. So this is going to be 1 plus 12, which equals 13. And the bottom you keep the same, divided by 9. So the answer here is 13 over 9. Here, there is no common denominator, so we do not need to um, simplify this fraction. Let's look at another example. Here, we have 1 third plus 3. Well, when you have a fraction plus a whole number, it could be easier to write the whole number as a fraction. 3 is the same as 3 over 1. Well, now we have the same problem. This is 1 over 3. This is 1 over, or 3 over 1. So this is 3 and this is 1. We can't add these together directly. So we need the lowest common denominator, which in this case is 3, because 1, of course, will go into 3. So it's 3. So if we want to get this to have 3 on the bottom, we have to multiply it by 3 over 3, which, of course, is just 1. The same number over itself is 1, so we're just multiplying this by 1. Multiply the top by 3. 3 times 3 is 9. Multiply the bottom by 3. 3 times 1 is 3. So essentially what we have is 1 third plus 9 thirds. Add the tops together. 1 plus 9 is 10. Keep the bottom the same. 10 thirds. So this is the answer to this one. I should put this in a box so it's clear if you're looking back which one is the answer to, which, to the problem. Now we have subtraction. Subtraction works the same way. We have 1 sixth minus 3 eighths. We need a lowest common denominator. In this case, it's actually not 48, which is 6 times 8. It is 24, because they both go into 24. To get um, 1 sixth, or 6, to be 24, we need to multiply it by 4. In order to make sure we're multiplying by 1 over 1, we put, or excuse me, the same number over itself, or ultimately multiplying by 1, basically we need to put 4 over 4. So 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 6 is 24. So we have 4 over 24 minus, in order to get 8 to be 24, we have to multiply by 3. So we want to multiply by 3 over 3. 3 times 3 is 9. And 8 times 3 is is 24. So we have 4 24ths minus 9 24ths, which is negative 5 over 24. And this is the simplest form of this fraction, so we do not need to simplify. So when we're adding and subtracting fractions, we're trying to find the lowest common denominator, and then we are um, uh, subtracting once we have the lowest common denominator. The next thing that I want to look at is multiplying fractions and dividing fractions. So in this case, um, we basically want to, to um, do the multiplication of these numbers. And believe it or not, we've actually already done this. Uh, we already did this in the previous case because we had to multiply fractions together in order to make the denominators match. But here we're going to do it again. When we multiply fractions, we multiply the tops and we multiply the bottoms. So in this case, you have 2 times 1, which is 2, over 3 times 2, which is 6. These have a common denominator, which is 2. So we divide this by 2, we divide this by 2, and the simplest answer here is 2 over 2, which is 1. 6 over 2 is 3, 1 third. In the next case, we have 3 eighths times 6. Remember that if you have a whole number, you could write it as a fraction as 6 over 1. Well, 3 times 8 is 18. 8 times 1 is, of course, 8. Here, we have a lowest common denominator, or a common denominator, excuse me, a common denominator of 2. So we divide this one by 2, we divide this one by 2, said another way, this isn't the simplest form, and we get 9 over 4. So this is the simplest form, is 9 fourths. 
I don't have it typed out here, um, but I do want to show you what you would do if you have um, three fractions multiplied by each other. So if you have 2 over 3 times 1 over 2 times 1 over 8 equals. If you have 3, just multiply them all. 2 times 1 times 1, which is just 2. 3 times 2, which is 6, times 8, which is 48. Now we have 2 over 48, so we multiplied all the tops and multiplied all the bottoms. If we had 7 fractions, we would do the same thing. This is not the simplest form because it has a common denominator, which is 2. Divide by 2, divide by 2, and we get 1 24th as the simplest form of this multiplication. So that's what we do when we're multiplying fractions. Dividing fractions is almost the same, except there's a trick. So we have 2 thirds divided by 4. To write this as a fraction, we put it as 4 over 1. When you're dividing, the number you're dividing by needs to be flipped upside down. So said another way, this is 2 over 3 times, notice that the divide changed to a times, and when you multiply, you have to flip this upside down. So instead of 4 over 1, it's 1 over 4. All right, so multi dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. The reciprocal is when you flip it upside down. So it went from, notice, two things changed. The divide became to times. The 4 over 1 became a 1 over 4. Now we do exactly what we did in the previous case. Multiply the tops. 2 times 1 is, of course, 2. 3 times 4 is 12. We have a common denominator of 2, so divide by 2, divide by 2, so we have a common denominator of 2, and this equals 1 sixth. So that is the answer to this one. Now let's look at another example. In this case, we have 3 sixths divided by 1 sixth. So we have 3 over 6. We should change the divide again to a times, and we change the 1 over 6, we flip it upside down, or we take the reciprocal, to a 6 over 1. Multiply by the tops. Multiply the tops, excuse me, 3 times 6, which is 18. 6 multiplied bottom, 6 times 1, which is 6. Um, 6 goes evenly into 18, so the answer is actually not a fraction. It's a whole number, which is 3. So this is just a brief review of simplifying fractions, adding and subtracting fractions, and multiplying and dividing fractions. Again, it will not be used directly in chemistry. However, we do use dimensional analysis, which does involve using conversion factors, which are essentially fractions. So knowing the rules of fractions can be very helpful.